Daisy Framework Self-Assessment Tool. This video is designed to show you how to complete the self-assessment for the ECTA system framework, which includes the DAISY data system component. If you are not familiar with the framework, please stop and review it before continuing to watch this video. It can be found on the ECTA and DAISY websites. The self-assessment tool in Excel provides a structure for State Part C and Part B Section 619 preschool programs to record the current status of their state system and set priorities for improvement. Additional information about how to use the self-assessment is contained in the guidance document. Both the self-assessment and the guidance document may be downloaded from either the ECTA or DAISY websites. Now let's take a look at the tool. Once you download this Microsoft Excel document, the first important step is to enable macros. A macro is a way of automating routine tasks, such as applying formatting to shapes and text and inserting drawing images. Enabling macros in the self-assessment tool allows you to complete a sequence of steps with just one button click or keyboard command. If you have a later version of Microsoft Excel, once you download and open the tool, you can easily enable those macros by simply clicking on the button that reads Enable Content. That's it. If you have a version of Excel earlier than 2010, use the Instructions tab in the first worksheet to access links containing easy-to-follow instructions for enabling macros in various versions of the software. The self-assessment tool incorporates 16 different worksheets. Each worksheet is identified by a labeled tab at the bottom. Let's go through the worksheets one at a time. The first worksheet includes detailed instructions. These instructions are also contained in the guidance documents available for download with the self-assessment Excel file on the ECTA and DAISY websites, as shown earlier. The participants sheet is to be used to identify the participants who have been involved in the self-assessment process. The top of the worksheet has fields for identifying your state and program. Be sure to indicate whether you are Part C or Part B619 as the information controls other information in the workbook. Enter the date the self-assessment for each component was completed. Enter the names and roles of the individuals who contributed to completing the self-assessments. Since different stakeholders can be involved with different components, you need to indicate which component each person participated in by placing a check mark in the appropriate column. Next, let's look at the table of contents. The table of contents provides a list of each of the framework components and their subcomponents. In addition to providing a quick overview of all the components and subcomponents, the table of contents also can be used to navigate to these worksheets. An alternative to using the links is to click on the worksheet tabs at the bottom of the document. The next 11 sheets are labeled from GV for governance to SU for sustainability. These are the sheets where you enter the ratings for the self-assessment. The first five tabs correspond to the first five components of the system framework, starting with governance and ending with quality standards. The next six tabs, starting with purpose and vision and ending with sustainability, are the subcomponents that make up the data system component, which is the sixth component of the system framework. All the subcomponents of data system are color coded in various shades of blue. Let's look at governance to show you how the self-assessment is completed. You can see a set of elements organized under quality indicators. Quality indicator one in governance has elements A through I. Quality indicator two has elements A through H. To complete the self-assessment, stakeholders will read each element and discuss what they know about where the state is with regard to implementing that element. The discussion and supporting evidence for each element should be entered in the text box. The box will expand to give you as much space as needed. Then, on the basis of this evidence, one of four possible ratings for each element is selected. 
A rating of 1 indicates that the element is not in place and the state is not planning to work on it anytime soon. A rating of 2 means that the element is not in place, but the state is either planning to work on it or is getting started to work on it. A rating of 3 indicates that the element is partially implemented, and a rating of 4 means that the element has been fully implemented. To indicate a rating, enter a number between 1 and 4, or select a number from the drop-down menu. Notice that the element rating scale is provided above the rating column at the top of each component worksheet. When all of the elements in a quality indicator have been rated, the rating for the quality indicator will appear automatically. The quality indicator rating is on a 7-point scale and reflects the extent to which the elements in an indicator have been implemented. The quality indicator scale ranges from 1, which means none of the elements is yet planned or in place, to 7, which means all of the elements are fully implemented. The quality indicator rating is automatically calculated based on the ratings for the elements. This is in a blue field, which means that the result is automatically calculated and cannot be changed. For the auto calculation to work, each of the elements has to be rated. Let's look at an example. Here we have quality indicator 8, and the elements A, B, through E have been rated. As element F has not been rated, the quality indicator rating does not show up. Let's go ahead and enter a rating. Notice that the QI rating cell now displays a rating. The self-assessment also supports assigning priority ratings for improvement planning. Within each sheet, you will be able to indicate whether an element and or indicator is low, medium, or high priority for the state. To indicate the priority level, use the drop-down menu or simply enter the letters L, M, or H as either uppercase or lowercase letters. A rating of H in this cell signifies that Quality Indicator 1 has a high priority for the state in terms of improvement planning. Remember, you also can assign a priority to each element. We recommend that you work through all of the elements on a worksheet before assigning priorities, so you have an overall sense of where the state is across the full set of quality indicators. On the other hand, if a high priority area for the state is clear as part of the discussion, the priority can be assigned immediately. Let's look at some of the features at the top of the worksheet. Use the Show Evidence and Hide Evidence buttons to toggle the visibility of evidence. Each element sheet allows you the option to view it with or without the evidence. The option to hide the evidence is useful if you want to print the rating sheet without the evidence. The QI buttons allow you to move easily among the quality indicators in the component. Now let's look at the QI Summary Sheet. This sheet provides you a profile of all the quality indicators for the completed components. As this is a read-only sheet, no information can be entered on this sheet. Information displayed on this sheet is automatically pulled from the quality indicators on the other sheets. The first component, Governance, has eight quality indicators, and here we see the quality indicator ratings for each within this component. If a priority rating was entered, it will be displayed here as well. A bar graph displays each quality indicator rating. Ratings of 1 and 2 are displayed in red. Ratings of 3, 4, and 5 are displayed in yellow. And ratings of 6 and 7 are displayed in green. This sheet provides a dashboard view of the quality indicator ratings for each component. The Total Number of Elements column shows the total number of elements for that quality indicator. The next column provides the breakdown of the element ratings. Quality Indicator 3, which contains 5 elements, has 3 elements with a rating of 3 and 2 elements with a rating of 4. The sum of the numbers in the element rating boxes adds up to the total number of elements. The columns on the right display a summary of the priorities assigned to the elements. There are two buttons at the top of the sheet that control how much text is displayed. If you want to show only one line of the quality indicator text, use the narrow rows. Use the wrapped text button to view the full text for each quality indicator. The links at the top of this sheet allow you to navigate to ratings for other components or subcomponents in the summary sheet.
there are several places in the tool with special scoring conditions. One is the Comp Data Sheet, which is a special part of the System Design and Development subcomponent within the Data System component. This sheet displays the set of data elements that are recommended for a high-quality Part C or Part B619 data system. These data elements are organized by child-level data elements, service provider, teacher-level data elements, and Early Intervention Services Program or Local Educational Agency-level data elements. This sheet is completed by indicating whether each data element is available in the data system by entering Y for yes or N for no. When all of the information has been entered, a summary will appear showing the number of data elements available for each level, the total in each level, and the percentages of data elements in the system for each level. Remember earlier we pointed out that you should enter whether your program is Part C or Part B619 on the participant sheet? That is important because some of the recommended data elements are not applicable for a Part B619 program. If you have indicated that your program is Part B619, you will see four such data elements with gray shading. The only option you can enter for the shaded data elements is not applicable. Any items with a not applicable response will not be included in the summary calculations. The comp data is part of the system design and development subcomponent of the data system component under quality indicator 4, element A. There are additional elements, B through Q, that describe the features and functions that contribute to a high-quality data system. The comp data, or element A, is not factored into the rating for quality indicator 4, but elements B through Q are. Within these elements B through Q for quality indicator 4 of the system design and development subcomponent are two elements with different shading, H and P. This indicates another case of special scoring. Data elements H and P are only applicable to states that have a transactional data system. If you have a transactional data system, you should rate this data element. If you do not have a transactional data system, then use the Not Applicable option available in the drop-down menu. Let's take a look at one more special scoring condition that occurs in the quality standards component of the framework. Whether you rate some of the elements for this quality indicator depends on what ratings you assign to other elements. This is explained here, but you don't need to worry about it because the tool will show you the appropriate elements depending on the ratings provided. Let's go ahead and see what would happen if these elements had received a rating of 3 or 4. Because these elements are in place, the tool indicates that you need not rate elements L, M, and N to receive a quality indicator rating. However, if I and K are rated a 1 or 2, the tool makes L, M, and N available to rate. Ratings are required for these elements to receive a quality indicator rating. Now that you know how to navigate and enter data into the self-assessment tool, let's review the process for saving the file. It is similar to saving any other Microsoft Excel file. Include the date at the end of the file name, such as ECTA DAISY Self-Assessment 61215 to allow for better tracking of each version saved. Be sure to save the file periodically while you are working on it. Finally, each worksheet has an existing default print area that is set up to optimize printing. Simply print as is or feel free to customize your print area settings based on your preference. If you have any questions about how to navigate the self-assessment or would like support in completing it, please contact ECTA or DAISY.